And I still go out for a square meal. The Ponderosa. For steak, baked potato, salad, and old-fashioned square deal prices. Right, kids? Right on, Gramps. Right on. <laughs> In the 1970s, a wave of fancy restaurants swept the United States, offering unique flavors and luxurious dining experiences. These establishments became cultural landmarks, shaping a generation's culinary preferences. Let's revisit 13 legendary restaurants from this transformative decade, each leaving an indelible mark on America's culinary history. First on the list, Lutes. Situated in the heart of Manhattan, Lutes was synonymous with French haute cuisine and became a beacon of fine dining from the moment it opened its doors in 1961, reaching its zenith in the 1970s. Under the meticulous guidance of Chef André Soltner, Lutesi served exquisite dishes that drew celebrities, politicians, and culinary enthusiasts alike. Known for its classic Alsace-inspired fare and impeccable service, Lutes remained a landmark until its closure in 2004, remembered for setting standards in American fine dining. Next up, La Cote Basque. Another jewel in New York's culinary crown, La Cote Basque was the epitome of French elegance and gastronomy. Opened in 1958, it flourished in the 1970s, offering a menu filled with refined Basque and French classics. The restaurant was a popular haunt for New York's elite, famed for its lavish interior inspired by the French Riviera and its discreet yet attentive service. Though it closed in 2004, La Cote Basque remains a symbol of the city's glamorous dining scene during the 1970s. Number three, Michael's which opened in 1979, pioneered California cuisine with an emphasis on fresh local ingredients and a fusion of culinary techniques. The brainchild of Michael McCarty, the restaurant featured a garden setting that was as enchanting as its menu. Michael's played a significant role in defining modern American cuisine and influenced a generation of chefs. Its closing marked the end of an era for Santa Monica's upscale dining scene. Number four, Ma Maison. Ma Maison was the go-to establishment for Hollywood's A-listers during the late 70s. Opened by Patrick Terrell and chef Wolfgang Puck in 1973, this West Hollywood spot blended French culinary arts with California's laid-back style. The restaurant's unmarked entrance, a plain green door, only added to its mystique and exclusivity. Ma Maison was a pioneer in the concept of the celebrity chef and helped launch Puck's illustrious career. Its closure in the mid-80s left a void in Los Angeles high-end dining culture. Next up, the Forum of the Twelve Caesars. The Forum of the Twelve Caesars in New York offered a theatrical dining experience unmatched in its day. Opening its doors in 1957 and soaring through the 1970s, the restaurant was famed for its opulent Roman-themed decor and sumptuous Italian cuisine. Diners were treated to meals served on golden plates, surrounded by statues of Roman deities and historic frescoes. Though it closed in the early 80s, the memory of its lavish presentations and meticulous attention to historical details endures. Number six, Trader Vic's. Famed for its exotic Polynesian-themed decor and as the purported birthplace of the Mai Tai cocktail, Trader Vic's in San Francisco was more than just a restaurant. It was an experience. Founded by Victor Bergeron in 1934, its popularity peaked in the 1970s, becoming a cultural icon and a staple of the tiki culture that swept America. Its eclectic mix of global dishes and signature drinks attracted a diverse crowd, from celebrities to tourists. The closure of its original location marked the end of an era, though its influence on American cocktail culture remains. Who remembers Le Perroquet? Le Perroquet, which opened its doors in 1973, brought French sophistication to Chicago's burgeoning dining scene. The restaurant quickly became known for its innovative approach to traditional French cuisine under the guidance of chef Jean Joho. With its elegant interiors and a menu that featured decadent dishes, Le Perroquet was a staple for Chicago's elite until its closure in the late 1990s. Next up, The Colony. The Colony was an emblem of New York High Society's dining culture, particularly in the 1970s. Renowned for its American and continental dishes, its clientele included a veritable who's who of business tie arts, celebrities, and socialites. The Colony's interior, adorned with lush carpets and discreet lighting, created an atmosphere of exclusivity and sophistication. 
The restaurant was famous for its impeccable service and was a staple on the Manhattan social circuit until it closed its doors in the late 1970s, leaving behind tales of legendary soirees and sumptuous feasts. Number 9 on the list The Brasserie in the bustling heart of Manhattan, the Brasserie stood out as a beloved institution known for its 24-hour service and sleek, modernist interior. Established in the late 1950s and hitting its stride in the 1970s, it served as a vibrant hub for New York's night owls, theater goers, and the after-hours crowd seeking a sophisticated bite after midnight. The Brasserie offered a taste of Paris with its exquisite French bistro fare, ranging from expertly prepared escargot to classic coco vin, encapsulating the essence of French culinary tradition with a New York twist. Its ability to combine the charm of Parisian cafes with the dynamic energy of New York City made it a unique venue in the city's dining scene. Despite undergoing a redesign and eventually closing in the early 2000s, the Brasserie remains fondly remembered for its cosmopolitan vibe and as a beacon of New York City's dining scene, having left a lasting imprint on the culinary memories of its patrons. Number 10. Imperial Dynasty Nestled in the unlikely rural setting of Hanford, California, Imperial Dynasty was a remarkable fusion of Chinese and French cuisine, offering a unique dining experience that drew visitors from across the nation. Established in the 1960s and reaching its peak in the 1970s, the restaurant was renowned for its luxurious decor, which featured rich silk draperies and fine Chinese porcelain, creating an atmosphere of exotic elegance. The menu was a masterful blend of traditions, with dishes that showcased the sophistication of French techniques and the bold flavors of Chinese cooking. This culinary excellence turned Imperial Dynasty into a landmark in the area, synonymous with an unparalleled dining experience in a small town. The closure of Imperial Dynasty in 2006 marked the end of an era, leaving behind a legacy of culinary innovation and cultural fusion. Number 11. Scandia on the iconic Sunset Boulevard, Scandia was a bastion of Scandinavian cuisine in Los Angeles throughout the 1970s. Known for its elegant dining room adorned with sleek Nordic designs and a palette of cool blues and grays, Scandia offered a refined setting that attracted Hollywood's elite. The menu featured an array of refined Nordic dishes, from Swedish meatballs to Danish smørbrød, each prepared with meticulous care and authentic ingredients. Scandia served as a cultural bridge, introducing Angelenos to the understated luxury of Scandinavian culture and cuisine. Its closure in the 1980s was a significant loss for Los Angeles's culinary scene, but the restaurant is still remembered for its stylish ambiance and as a landmark that enriched LA's diverse restaurant landscape. Next up, Maxime's de Paris, a franchise of the illustrious Parisian establishment, Maxime's de Paris in Chicago offered a portal to French luxury amid the bustling urban landscape. Opened in 1963 and flourishing throughout the 1970s, Maxime's became a cornerstone of Chicago's fine dining scene. The restaurant was celebrated for its opulent Belle Epoque décor, complete with lush velvet drapes, antique chandeliers, and ornate furnishings, which transported guests to the glamorous early 20th century Paris. The menu boasted classic French cuisine, featuring everything from delicate foie gras to rich bois each dish crafted to perfection. Although it closed in the 1980s, Maxime's de Paris is still celebrated for its grandeur and remains a cherished memory for those who experience the elegance and charm of Parisian dining in the heart of Chicago. Who remembers the Mandarin? In the heart of San Francisco's Ghirardelli Square, the Mandarin set the standard for upscale Chinese cuisine from its opening in 1961 well into the 1970s. Founded by the visionary restaurateur Cecilia Chiang, the Mandarin introduced Americans to authentic Northern Chinese dishes, a stark contrast to the Cantonese-style food that was prevalent in the United States at the time. The menu was a culinary revelation, offering now-iconic dishes like Peking duck and pot stickers, which were virtually unknown in the U.S. at the time. Cecilia's insistence on high-quality, authentic ingredients and her meticulous attention to detail and presentation elevated the Mandarin to legendary status. Though it closed in the early 2000s, the Mandarin's legacy lives on, remembered as a pioneering force that transformed Chinese dining in America. The 1970s were a vibrant decade for dining, characterized by innovation, elegance, and cultural exchange. 
The restaurants highlighted in this retrospective not only served incredible food, but also set trends, defined standards, and left lasting impressions on patrons and the culinary world at large. Each establishment, in its own way, contributed to the rich tapestry of American dining culture, and their legacies continue to inspire today's culinary scene. While these iconic restaurants may no longer exist, their influence and the memories they created endure, reminding us of a time when dining out was as much about the experience as it was about the food.